There was lots of new information dropped on us on the last earnings call, so I'm gonna be kind of specializing on a lot of the little details within that call, and today's video is mainly about the 4680 batteries, which were probably the most exciting update they provided, aside from the third-party supercharging thing. So I wanted to highlight a few of the details here because they're easy to miss, and a lot of people probably won't think much about them. But the main thing is, the lifetime tests of the cells have been going great. From the update of Drew, the same guy who was helping Elon with the presentation at Battery Days. They said that the 4680 cells are proving to be viable. They have great yields and they're ready to go into vehicles. They were even putting them into structural packs on Model Ys and doing crash tests. And they said the crash tests have proven to be successful. So the structural pack is safe. That once again points to the idea of the 4680 cells with a structural pack coming out of Texas and Berlin. And thanks to that part reduction and weight savings, we're looking at either big jump in range or whole Hopefully a much bigger drop in price, which we could really use right now as long as Tesla is able to keep up with demand because as of right now, way too many people are ordering the vehicles and the price is still pretty dang high. They said they've learned a lot from the Cato Road facility and they figured out about 90% of the mass production process, but there's just a final 10% of pieces that are needing to be ironed out before the volume production that has to go on at Texas and Berlin. Both of those factories have construction crews running around the clock to make sure that these cell plants can get up and running and operational as soon as possible. I'm guessing because Tesla Semi is delayed until next year that a lot of the 4680 cells they're building at Cato Road might be shipped directly to Texas or Berlin before their 4680 production is up and running. So maybe that's where a lot of these well-proven batteries are heading. But knowing about how they're performing in actual vehicles, I think is the most exciting because Drew officially used the terminology of the 4680 have been tested to last to over a million miles equivalent within their testing facilities and I assume maybe even a few prototypes we know they've been toying around with the structural pack which means there might be a couple Model Ys with 4680s driving around the Fremont area we just can't tell but there was so much talk and so much hype about there being a million mile battery last year and they never really talked about it at battery day I'm excited for them to finally address that and acknowledge that now there was an Easter egg in the 4680 battery production video Tesla uploaded to their channel where the song that was playing as they were mass producing batteries said that I would take you a million miles. I don't think people truly understand what the purpose of that cycle life means. Essentially you want to have batteries that can last that long when you start building structural packs because one of the downsides of that type of design is there's pretty much no chance of the batteries being replaced. So if the batteries degrade and they can't hold as much energy over time and the range of your vehicle drops pretty significantly and you you cannot replace the batteries because they're structural you know they're literally holding the car together that's not going to be good so knowing that these 4680s are going to age really really well a million miles essentially means that even if you were driving 50 miles a day every day of the week right every day of the year you did not stop and you always drove 50 miles on average per day it would still take you over 50 years of that type of driving habit to exceed the 1 million mile mark on the car so basically what it means if they're testing over a million miles is the batteries are gonna last just as long as the car does most people definitely do not hold on to their vehicles for 50 years and the good news is with the transition to electric vehicles you might even be able to hold on to these cars longer than you could ever hold on to your internal combustion engine vehicles because they break down transmission brakes or there's not enough oil changes going on and over time obviously cars wear down and knowing that 4680 Teslas are going to be able to last 50 years before the battery health starts to become questionable potentially up to 60 or 70 years with how you're charging it and what your driving habits are like. That's really good news for the future of electric vehicles. And Elon also talked a little bit more about the lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which currently is only being used in China with the standard range Model 3 and recently now the standard range Model Y. These batteries are cheaper to produce. They have longer cycle life than the 2170 cells. And what I really love about them is you can charge them up to 100% daily without harm the battery which is amazing and it's a shame that they haven't found the suppliers yet to use lithium iron phosphate in the United States because that would be really really nice but because the cells are less energy dense they take up more space and they're a bit heavier which is why at battery day they talked about the iron based vehicles only being the standard range option so if you're making electric vehicles with a range under 300 miles that's when lithium iron phosphate makes a lot of sense the $25,000 Tesla that they've been talking about for a long time is pretty much 
much rumored to only be using iron phosphate, but during this earnings call, they said that iron phosphate would make up for, in the long term, two-thirds of their battery orders, so more than half, and he even alluded to the idea of lithium iron phosphate not necessarily being in the 4680 format, which I thought was interesting, because at battery day, they kind of were referencing lithium iron phosphate in the cylindrical state, so that you could still retain the structural battery pack, but now they're saying it's some other state, they didn't exactly say what it is, so maybe there's a different type of cell that they want to use for iron phosphate, or maybe they just want to go with prismatic. Personally, I don't know if they're able to turn prismatic cells into a structural pack, so there might be a lot of different manufacturing techniques going on with the iron phosphate vehicles, we don't know for sure. If anything, this points to the idea that Giga Texas and Giga Berlin will not be mass producing standard range Teslas, so I know there are a few of you out there assuming the standard range Model Y would come back from Texas, or Giga Berlin would start with a standard range option because that's cheaper. Based on their current vocabulary, that doesn't sound likely. It sounds like the nickel-based batteries that are in the 4680 format, those are going to be restricted for higher range vehicles. In fact, he even alluded to the idea of ships and aircraft using nickel-based 4680 batteries. I don't think that's confirmation Tesla is going to start making planes or ships, but I imagine that once the electric vehicle transition has kind of fully taken shape and they've ramped batteries, that's going to be the next big challenge because ships obviously would need a ton of batteries that Tesla doesn't have right now, but that's probably decades away before that type of production begins. Although this is why, of course, it makes sense the Cybertruck and its tri-motor options and the long-range Model Y will be using the structural pack with 4680s to achieve amazing range and being able to produce those at scale for an affordable price point is good. So Tesla Mega Pack and Power Walls are likely going to be shifting to all iron phosphate as well because it's cheaper and with Mega Pack and Power Walls, you don't really care much about weight because they're not moving objects. You just kind of strap them to a house or plant Mega Packs on a cement slab. So iron phosphate weighs more, but cycle life is good and the price of it is good. That's why it'll probably make sense for more energy storage. Once Tesla is able to make more iron phosphate batteries available for energy storage, then they'll have more batteries available for long range Teslas like the Model 3 and Y. But overall, most of the updates they provided with batteries a couple days ago were all good things and it sounds like there's no chemistry issues. Even Drew alluded to the dry electrode saying, yeah, we're not really having any problems with that, which I thought was funny. How often do you mass produce something and there's some stage of the process where you're like, yeah, that, that worked out pretty much how we thought it would work out. Good thing they bought Maxwell and got that tech from them and the main issue they're running into right now with mass production are apparently these giant calendar rolls which squish the cathode kind of like pizza dough as Elon said and when they're doing it at a larger scale the cathode is corrupted and crushed a little bit too much compared to when they were doing it on a smaller scale at Cato Road. So again as Drew said it's an engineering problem not a science problem. There's not fundamentally something wrong with this type of battery. It's just a matter of figuring out what type of equipment and what temperatures and what amount of pressure they need to apply to the cathode so that they can scale up these batteries which should be on the road and in customer vehicles by the end of this year. They're not changing from that timeline so that's what has me really really pumped for these batteries and I think that's where Tesla has devoted a lot of their attention and money towards which is good because that's the limiting factor with electric vehicles right now. I'm excited to find out the range numbers of these updated Teslas and how the weight can improve and that type of thing and I'm curious how long do you think the range will be with these 4680 Model Ys? I still have a glimmer of hope in me that these new batteries are going to allow the Model Y to go over 420 miles on a charge thanks to the weight savings and the great energy density of these cells. They're not going to be able to ramp them at an insane volume at first. That's why they'll probably start with the performance Model Ys and then maybe sometime next year ramp up to long range Model Ys because they did mention during this call they think they can get up to 100 gigawatt hours per year run rate sometime next year which is an insane amount of batteries and then add in all the other battery suppliers are going to be adding and doubling apparently their orders for. That's just going to be an insane amount of growth in 2022. But how good is this range going to get? Feel free to let me know your predictions. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.